The question often comes up, what if mental hygiene doesn't work? There are a number of things to consider when we feel that mental hygiene might not be working in supporting our mental well-being. First off, if you feel mentally unwell, it would be a good idea to speak to your doctor about it and inquire about accessing professional mental health services. As we often say, brushing your teeth does not replace the need for a dentist. And it's perfectly okay and normal that you have excellent mental hygiene, but still need to work with a psychotherapist. Second, as we've addressed in other videos, mental hygiene is not the only good habit required to support our overall health. So although someone may be practicing mental hygiene as recommended, there may be other important daily habits that are not being addressed or possibly neglected. When I was a young man, and fresh out of my teenage years, I began to practice deep breathing exercises. I was also a very messy person with my bedroom looking like the, the explosion had went off. I began to note that I was having trouble relaxing while doing deep breathing in my bedroom. Eventually it occurred to me that my messy room was hindering my deep breathing exercises. So I began to clean up after myself and then found that I enjoyed the deep breathing much more when doing it in a clean room. So sometimes it's helpful to look elsewhere in our lives other than mental hygiene when we sense our mental well-being is hindered. Maybe there's a delicate conversation someone ought to have with another person that they've been putting off. Maybe someone is going to bed too late every night. So looking outside a mental hygiene practice may be helpful. Third, it may be worth considering to change your mental hygiene practice. It's not uncommon that after a couple of weeks of doing one type of practice, that it seems to lose its freshness and does not seem to be having as much impact as before. This may be a sign that it's time to switch practices. Try something else. See if you connect with a different approach. This helps keep things fresh and dynamic overall. Perhaps someone who has been practicing deep breathing for a few weeks and find that they've been able to tune into a sense of mental quiet more easily. Although at first it seemed to really be helpful in improving their inner well-being, they find it seems stagnant. So they switch to gratitude exercises and practice carefully reviewing all the good things that are occurring for them, further nurturing a sense of positivity and well-being in their life. And lastly, it can be helpful to generally set aside the notion of working or not working. In other words, to surrender the idea of results. We often get caught up in the idea of results and outcomes, which may pull our attention away from today, from this moment. There's a saying that if we focus on the process, the outcomes will take care of themselves. Outcomes are generally not in our control and involve many variables and factors that are out of our grasp. Processes, taking care of today to the best of our ability, is much more within our reach. Also, when we talk of mental hygiene, we emphasize hygiene. That is something that is an ongoing, lifelong process. If, life willing, I live to be an old man in my late 80s, most of my hygienic practices will be very similar to what they are today. Further, although I might need to see a dentist for an aching tooth, I'll still keep brushing my teeth. If I have physical health issues, I'll keep showering daily and going for walks. There are certain habits in life that regardless of what is going on, it's generally a good idea to just keep doing it. Mental hygiene is one of those.